So in today's video, I want to talk to you about composition and all the elements that you have to keep in mind when you're standing in the field to, uh, yeah, to compose this scene. I want to try and give you some helpful uh, tips and tricks uh, yeah, to make this yeah, very difficult subject uh, a little bit uh, easier to, uh, to handle when you're uh, in the field. And for myself, I think this is the single most difficult thing about photography. And I've struggled with choosing compositions and fine tuning it for over many years. And uh, yeah, still I'm struggling with this. And every day I'm learning and every day I'm trying new things uh, concerning this uh, subject. So what I've did, I've selected some bad example images. And right after that, I'm showing you how you can solve that bad image, uh, what you can do to make it look better. So uh, yeah, let's dive into this, uh, this video. And uh, I will uh, hopefully give you some uh, nice tips and tricks for the next time you're uh, out on location. So this is the first image that we're uh, going to look at and um, yeah, it's uh, actually from the video that's coming this Sunday and I was editing uh, these images and I, uh, I thought this was a rather nice uh, image but somehow this tree was on the wrong side for me and um, yeah, I was thinking what's, what's wrong with this image and that's something to keep in mind when you go through your own images. Just look at your image and think to yourself what? could have done better with this image. So in this example, I think this tree is just positioned in the wrong way. Uh, it's not in the center, it's not on the left, it's not on the right. It is just doesn't feel uh, right at all. And I actually took another image on this morning, and that's this one. And this is much better because this tree is on the right side. And also uh, the tree is yeah, pointing a little bit to the left. You know, the right side is lower than the left side. And it just uh, has the same almost the same angle as this little hill in the bottom. And yeah, the, the flow of this image is just much, uh, much nicer. So this is the image that inspired me to make this uh, video. So we're going to go through this uh, the same way, uh, bad image, good image. And I will show you all these techniques and uh, tips and tricks to, uh, to, make this, uh, to make this work. So this is another image, a backlit uh, tree. But I think this is just the wrong time of day. And you can see all these bushes in the background, a uh, top corner, lower uh, a corner on the right. Uh, these, these are way too prominent in the picture. And this, this bush of this tree is actually pretty nice, but the background is just disturbing uh, everything. So this is another example, uh, a little bit early on the day, different location, but it just works way better. The flow through this image is better. The background is really soft. And yeah, this, this tree is coming out of this image and it just supports all the elements that, uh, that are around it. So it's a much better and cleaner image. And also the trees and bushes in the background, they are not intersecting with the line. So it's a much cleaner image uh, to look at. And if you look at the next image, yeah, I remember shooting this image and I thought to myself, I'll, I'll put a link up to the video uh, up here. I thought this was a really good image. But when I got home and I tried to edit it, I just realized that this was totally wrong. So I kept the sun in. I had to go a little bit to the right uh, to make it work because I could get the sun out of this frame uh, pretty easy. And also this branch on the lower left it's almost intersecting with the horizon here. And I should have got a little bit lower, a little bit to the right. And I remember why I didn't do that. Because of this spider web in the foreground. I wanted to include the spider web. And when I look at it now, the spider web only distracts me from this beautiful tree. So the only thing I'm looking at is this branch intersecting with the horizon and the spider web. And there's also this, this sun that is completely blown out on the right side. So this image just, just doesn't work. This is a much better example of, of a dead tree on a sunrise. And uh, you can see this, this whole tree is pointing to the right side. So uh, the left side is a little bit straight and all the other branches are going to the right towards where the light is coming from. So the, the visual flow is much better. There's also a little path in the foreground that leads your eye towards this tree. And this right branch, this lower right branch, it's intersecting the horizon just a little bit, but it's not disturbing me in any way. The most of it is underneath the horizon, so it has to be underneath or above it, but don't intersect it too much. It just doesn't make your image uh, look better. And if you put a little bit more atmospheric conditions into a uh, sort of image like this, 
you get an image like this, where the whole background is faded away, everything is pointing towards this, this beautiful dead tree, and this dead tree again is pointing towards where the light is coming from, and there's just this really soft, subtle light coming through this fog, and yeah, it's creating a beautiful atmosphere. Also in the bottom, you can see there's a little path running towards this tree, so everything your eye points to is this tree, and that's what you want in your images. You want uh, yeah, to, to get your eye to focus on one thing, and that's everything. something you have to keep in mind, is... Uh, uh, where do you want the eye of your, your audience to look at in your picture? And uh, that's something you just have to, uh, have to keep in mind when, uh, when composing. So this is another example, uh, actually a pr pretty nice image, I think uh, myself. But there's not a real point where your eye is attracted to. So um, you have those grasses in the foreground, there's this beautiful light. But my eye isn't focused to one point in this image. Although it's still a beautiful atmospheric image. Uh, it, it just the visual flow in this image isn't isn't right. So this is the same moment, a different composition. And you can see those grasses leading your eye towards this left top. The island in the back is pointing your eye to the to the left side of this image. So everything your eyes are doing when you look at this image, they are being pulled in to the image, and that's what you want to accomplish. You just want to keep the viewer's attention in to the image. And uh, most of the times when an image doesn't work. Uh, for myself, I, I find myself looking around the image. What's what's going on here? What am I seeing? And when when the image is good, the first thing is you, your eye gets caught in one point on the image, and that's the case with the, with this. So just try to find these leading lines, these crosses pointing towards where you want the audience to uh, to look at your image. I remember this, shooting this image in uh, in Scotland. I'll put a link also up here uh, uh, in the corner. Uh, it was a really good hike and beautiful conditions and I just saw this beautiful light which, which looks like a crocodile and I thought, oh, this is beautiful. But when I was editing it, and I was looking at it when I got back to our uh, holiday home, I thought to myself, it's just totally wrong. This, this light is beautiful, but there's nothing to look at at the bottom here. There's, so this line is pointing towards the left, but what's there? There's just a enormous hole with nothing to look at. If there would have been a castle here or uh, uh, some sort of tower or a nice tree, uh, I don't know, but there had to be something here where that light should have gone to. And in the next image, this is a little bit later on a day on a different trip, but you can see there's kind of a similar situation where the light comes through this rain clouds, but this light is hitting a place of interest. and immediately my eye goes to this beautiful light lit up spot here on the right bottom and after that I start looking oh there's this beautiful atmosphere in the sky but it just works way better because there's something in that spot where where the light and that is pointing towards and that's something I'm always keeping in mind and sometimes I just lose these things when I'm in the field and I'm just looking at the light but it's not all about light it's also about where does this light go this is from our recent trip to, uh, to Belgium, and uh, uh, I really like uh, the light in this image. How the light is hitting this dead tree, how the light is hitting this, this frozen, frosty grasses in the foreground. But it's just totally wrong, because this uh, tree, in my opinion, is blocking the light. And uh, this tree should have been on the other side of the image, because then the light would have gone into the image, falling on this tree. And somehow I just didn't, uh, didn't see that immediately. So this is the second image that I took. And although the light in this image is way better, I think the composition here is much stronger because the light comes from the right, hits that tree on the right side. And if I would have shot this maybe 10 seconds earlier when the light conditions were like this image, then this would have been a really stunning uh, picture. And still, I really like this. But uh, yeah, it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, where does the light come from? Don't block it with a tree or something. Just put the tree on the other side of the image. Yeah, this is uh, an image from a couple of years ago. And I had two days after each other with a beautiful red sky. So this was the, the first day. And uh, yeah, for me, the sky is beautiful. The reflection is beautiful. But the image just doesn't work. And 
this, this tree line in the background is just way too prominent and it, it just looks like a black, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't know how to say it, but a black line in the, in the background. And also the, these grasses, there's just nothing pulling my eye into this picture. And the next day I took this shot and this works way better because this frozen lake here is yeah, pulling my eye into the background where the sun is rising, where this beautiful red sky is. And there's, there's nothing disturbing uh, in this image. It's just a beautiful flow towards where you want the viewer's attention. And that is this beautiful red sky. And this is another example from uh, Austria. I just walked around this waterfall for yeah, maybe uh, 20 to 30 minutes trying to uh, find a nice composition. And eventually I found this shot. And I thought uh, this was a really good one. But when I got home, I thought, yeah, it's a waterfall, but there's nothing, nothing to it. Where do I want my audience to look? Do I want them to look at this lower waterfall here or uh, at the upper part here or uh, at the trees or the rocks? There's nothing pulling my eye into it. And this is actually the same waterfall, I think maybe 10 minutes later when I joined my family again. And yeah, they were standing in front of this waterfall and I took this shot. and. This is just uh, uh, a beautiful example of something that uh, pulls your eye into this image. So the first thing you look at are those people and then you're looking up to this beautiful waterfall. And there's also, because of those people, you get a sense of scale from how large this waterfall actually is. Because in the first image, yeah, you, you can't really see how big this waterfall is. But because of my family standing in front of it, you can really see how this, uh, 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 yeah, waterfall flow. So this is a much better example of a visual flow into this waterfall. This is also a shot from Austria and when I saw this reflection I really thought oh this is a beautiful shot and um, but there's just way too much going on. This image is way too messy. Uh, uh, what am I supposed to look at? Am I to look at those grasses, those reflection? There's a tree left of this uh, beautiful mountain here. Uh, there's a moon also on the right side. There's nothing that, that pulls my eye into this uh, into a scene. And this is actually maybe uh, 20 minutes before that image, the same mountain. And yeah, I just really like the, the flow and the sense of this image. So it would have been better if there were a couple of clouds in the sky. But uh, yeah, this, this open glow and this, uh, I put a polarizer on this uh, image just yeah, a little bit. So you could see those rocks in the foreground. And uh, yeah, if you have a little bit of imagination, you can see those big boulders uh, pointing to the top. And it just works way better than that last shot because all those disturbing elements are gone. So it's all about the light hitting, uh, hitting those mountains uh, in the background. Yeah, and this uh, uh, is one of the clips from last year uh, that actually never made it to a video. I've spent maybe two to three hours in this location. It's in Scotland. And... Uh, it was a really busy location with a lot of people and I tried to work this scene and I was really attracted by this tree here on the right. And this tree actually grows out of this bare rock. So it's just one giant boulder and this tree just grows out of it. And I, I have no idea how that's, uh, how that's possible. But uh, yeah, I wanted to get this waterfall with a little bit of a long exposure flowing uh, underneath this tree and I couldn't get too much to the right because all those people were standing there there was a road in the background and I just tried to work it but it just doesn't work it's just way too messy I, I don't know um, yeah I, I tried to include those lines on the rock here in the foreground that pointing towards this tree but there's just way too much going on and I just couldn't work it so in the end I got home with not a single shot I was happy about. And uh, yeah, this video just never made it onto uh, the channel. So uh, there's a little bit of footage here that <laughs> you've just seen. Uh, uh, so I did use it right now, but uh, yeah, this is also a kind of similar image of a waterfall. Uh, yeah, but again, there's way too much going on. And when I was sitting there, I thought, oh, there's a beautiful flow through this image, but in the end, there were just way too much boulders and way too much disturbing elements. The light in the top here and the waterfall on the top. And I don't know where to look when I look at this, uh, this image. This is a little bit better. Uh, yeah, these rocks in the foreground and this waterfall. But in my opinion, uh, this left rock isn't uh, 
yeah, adding to the scene. So uh, yeah, I could clone it out and maybe I could crop it out somehow. But then still, in my opinion, this mid-ground section with the green water is way too large. So I should have got even lower to reduce that, that mid-ground uh, section. And um, yeah, then maybe uh, this, uh, this would have worked. But still, uh, it's better than the last two images because there's not too much disturbing uh, elements. But uh, my eye just gets caught in this middle section. And my audience, or you watching you should be watching or these rocks maybe maybe those uh, w this waterfall but the best would have been if these rocks were pointing towards the waterfall with a small midground and that everything is pointing towards the waterfall in the background and it's something like that this is this is the best light not the best image but i really like the composition because everything uh, in this image is is really uh, not disturbed all the disturbing elements are gone so you have this beautiful waterfall a small midground and then this mountain and everything seems to work together and if only i would have had a little bit of nice light in this image then it would have been a really stunning image but uh, i wasn't that lucky that day but just to show the composition uh, how you can make a waterfall work for your background uh, i think this is a really good uh, example of how you can uh, how you can achieve that uh, this is also uh, uh, a good example of a light ray. Uh, I was shooting this light ray and I was really thinking, oh, this is gorgeous light and uh, uh, this is going to be a cracker image. But when I look at it now, there's just nothing to look at. This, of course, there's this beautiful light, but what's this light doing? Where is it pointing at? It's just nothing. And uh, that's a, a missed opportunity, uh, actually. Maybe I should have stand in there myself or I don't know. I, I should have done something different than, uh, than this. And this is a little bit better. Uh, I've put the sun behind the tree. This is a couple of minutes after that, uh, that last shot. And yeah, I just uh, uh, thought to include this tree, but still my eye just gets pulled towards the sun. And it's, it's a pretty decent image, but still there's not nothing that your eye is uh, being pulled into this uh, image. I think this is way better. It's also a little bit softer. This is uh, uh, maybe a couple of months earlier. And there's a little path here in the foreground that runs your eye towards these light rays. And all these light rays support your eye to go to the right side. So the balance of this image is way better than uh, that, that last image. And this is another light ray image where the light rays just support the image. Because this little bench here, uh, yeah, it, there's just something to look at. And there's nothing disturbing in this image. And that was the case with those first two. And those last two were, were uh, way better than, uh, than this composition. And this is also a nice uh, um, example of uh, a disturbing background. So I just tried to get this leaf here in the foreground uh, with this beautiful light on it. And I thought, oh, this is going to work. But when I uh, look at it right now, the background, this bouquet, I really like this bouquet circles. But these circles have the same color as those... Uh, leaves in the foreground and that just doesn't work so if you want separation from your background with an, uh, a subject like this just try to avoid uh, yeah, a noisy background with the same colors because it, your eye doesn't catch those leaves because it keeps going around are those leaves on sharp notes okay but it's the same color so that just doesn't work and this is a much better example of uh, uh, leaves in the sunlight and in the background, there's no color the same as those leaves. And so your eye just gets pulled into those leaves. And I think this, is, uh, uh, this shot worked out uh, much better than that last one. So try to avoid busy backgrounds with colors that match in uh, yeah, things that are in your uh, immediate uh, foreground. Another example, uh, when I shot this image, I just thought this is amazing. I just, uh, yeah, I, I saw those light rays hitting this bush in the right bottom. And I just thought this is a cracker image. And when I look at it now, it just doesn't do anything to me. I don't know what it is, but uh, somehow this, this bush just turns out gold. I don't know, it, it seems to glow or something. I, I didn't even edit it much. Uh, it, it just came out uh, like this. But yeah, it's just too much of nothing. Uh, yeah, 
I don't even know what it is with this image, but uh, somehow uh, this push isn't uh, being pulled out of this image. So there is an official element on the right bottom, but my eye doesn't go there because it's way too soft uh, compared to the light uh, that's hitting it. So this is actually kind of a same situation where the sunlight is just hitting uh, from the back right into this uh, foggy scene. But in this case, uh, the, uh, the sun is really uh, supporting the... Um, sorry, I gotta get a little bit water here. Oh, way better. But uh, <laughs> the sunlight is just supporting uh, the scene. Uh, all those branches in the back are being lit up, but they are not disturbing the scene. So it's a really peaceful scene here. Uh, and all the elements just seem to work together. And in this scene is just a big bundle of light hitting a foggy little burning tree on the right bottom, but it's not supporting each other. It's uh, somehow they are, uh, they are distracting each other. And in this scene, all the elements are yeah, helping each other. And uh, it's actually almost the same identical uh, light because that light had just came over the tree line hitting into this scene and it's the same in the last image but uh, a totally uh, different result so this is uh, a shot from uh, from many years ago and uh, i went back to this place maybe four or five days uh, in in a, a small period of time because i really liked those birch trees uh, in the morning sun and it, this background was in the in the shade and i tried to work the scene multiple times but somehow it just doesn't work for me. I just couldn't get the right uh, conditions. And, and I don't really know what's wrong with the image, but the the, the feeling to it is just uh, a bit odd because this, this background was way too dark uh, for these trees in the in the foreground. And uh, it does look a little bit painty, which which I like, but uh, it's just not the uh, the image that I was, uh, was hoping for. This is a kind of similar situation where uh, there was a bush with beautiful autumn colors uh, standing in front of a background, but it just needs a little bit of foggy atmosphere. And that's actually what this last image needed. If there would have been a little bit of fog behind these trees, then the transition between the foreground and the background would have been a lot softer. And now it's just a heart being as if it's cut off or something and it just doesn't work for me. So in this case, this little bit of fog uh, is just... Uh, yeah, helping the scene to, uh, 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 to get those trees, your eyes on these trees and not on the background. And that's the problem with that last image. I'm, I'm looking at this background also, and that's something that you just don't want. And in this case, my eyes just focused on these beautiful colored trees in the foreground and the fork just eliminates, uh, illuminates, eliminates everything in the background. So, uh, so thanks for watching. I uh, hope you liked uh, today's video. Um, yeah, if you did, then please uh, push the, the thumbs up button. And there's also a little uh, subscribe button underneath this video. So if you didn't subscribe, uh, then please push the subscribe button. You will massively help this channel uh, to grow. And uh, yeah, you will uh, get a notification when I release uh, my next video. So this Sunday, I'm back on location uh, in the Netherlands. And I'm having an extremely foggy day where there's, there's not a single piece of sunlight uh, going through. So it's all about finding uh, the right uh, compositions. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of black and white uh, images in that because there was no light at all to support uh, the scene. So uh, I hope uh, you're gonna like that. So I hope to see you uh, this Sunday and uh, bye bye.